Welcome to Sports World Podcast, episode 39. We're talking about a variety of different topics, uncensored, unedited, and unfiltered. Uh, happy holidays, everybody. As you can see, a lot has changed. I am now a Christmas tree because, we would, well, by the time of this recording, it's right at Christmas. By the time this will be uploaded, it will be the 26th because I have terrible timing. And I was with my family all day, so I was planning on uploading a special. But due to some technical issues, uh, we were not able to upload this. Uh, we were not able to record. Now we're here. Uh, one of my Christmas gifts was a new computer. I don't think this is a better better camera quality. That is just mainly because I'm in my room. So, I mean, it's not the cleanest. I do apologize for this budget look. But uh, more recordings will be on this laptop because of the fact that I just want a faster way of editing and a, faster, and a better way of uploading. And hopefully this will fix the the countless episodes I have on Instagram that are not, that have no title. I've been meaning to try to figure that out. It wasn't working on my computer. Else. Hopefully it was just a computer issue and not an Instagram issue. If it's an Instagram issue, I'm going to get annoyed, but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother story. I hope you all had a good holidays out there. I did. I, I, I it was very interesting. Um, I woke up like around like 630, you know, got dressed and my dad came over. We opened gifts. They're all for me. I was, I really honestly, to be very honest, wasn't expecting anything this year. I, 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 and no gifts at all because it's been this year. And uh, no, it's been very interesting. I got I got some, some small stuff, but the stuff I did really enjoy. I got uh, two two games. I got Madden 21, which is a football game, American football game, and UFC 4, mixed martial arts. And um, I got a hoodie and a chain from my favorite YouTuber, Corey Kenshin. Shout out to him. I've been with him. I haven't been meaning to buy some of his merch, just the fact that I've been with him since uh, first, since, like, before he reached a thousand, he's now damn near at nine million right now, or he, he's the IRA, eight million or nine million right now, I've been, I've been, I'm, I'm one of the real, like, I can confidently say, I'm one of the OGs of that channel, so shout out to him, you had a hell of a, you've done a hell of a job, and, uh, the big thing I wanted to discuss was I got these two books, and I did not ask for these, but I was interested in reading this, the big, it's the one that I'm, I, I have, they're both like kind of thick. It's like, I talked about this, I talked about them briefly before. Alan Watts, you know, the, the British, that's backwards on the camera, but it's Alan Watts, it's his first book on the taboo against knowing who you are. And basically it reads, we are in the urgent need of an, we are dot, 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 in the urgent need of a sense of our own existence, which in a, is in accord which, with the physical facts and which overcome our, overcomes our feeling of all of alienation from the universe this and from his perspective he says growing up we learn to view ourselves as distinct and separate from the world around us but in but this sense of alienation from other people places and things is dangerous it makes us naturally skeptical of what which is not quote unquote us and drives our need to violently subjugate the natural world of our wishes here alan watts draws on the ancient hindu philosophy of vedanta to explain of what self really means showing that we are part of the world not we are we are a part of the world not apart from the world an essential work of philosophy the book makes clear for our senses a separation is a myth and that the self is in fact the root and ground of the entire universe it's a very interesting book i haven't read most of it yet i've read like beginning phases the chapter's names are very interesting. Yeah, you know, there's like a it's a very short book. You know, it's only like 161 pages, I guess. He's got like there's six chapters. It's the inside information, the game of black and white, how to be gen how to be a genuine fake, the world is your body, so what, and it. The six chapters. Obviously, the more I read this, I'll come back and I'll tell you all about it and how I how I think beyond these. And the big one. The big, the big, the big Bible of Eastern philosophy, the art of war, and other philosophical, and other in other classics of Eastern philosophy. This includes this is what it looks like. It's just this dragon. It's just it's like a Bible of Eastern philosophy here. I'm excited for this one too because I was just explaining the art of war because I talked about. It, I said I have to probably read that because I understand the basic concepts of the, of the art of war. I just wanted to read it to get the uh, right new details. But my mom, shout out to her, thank you, bought me this bought me this book and it's got a bunch of it's got six yes six if i can count correctly six uh classic philosophy te like 
you know, classics. You know, they have The Art of War, The Tao Te Ching, Confucian Analects, you know, Confucius. Tao Te Ching, um, I've heard of that before, I just don't recollect. The Great Learning, which I have no clue. The Doctrine of the Mean, and the works of Meng Zi. Don't know what any of these are. Don't recognize the title of other than The Art of War. And Tao Te Ching sounds familiar. I know who Confucius is. I have to read this. It's like it's a very it's a thick book. It's it's got shiny pages and everything. Things things thick. It's like a Bible. So you know, I definitely gonna take me a while to read this, but I'm going to definitely enjoy it. I'll let I, when we get to certain parts, I'll definitely bring up a lot to talk about on here uh, because it is a very interesting thing. I know this is what you know, I, 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 uh, I uploaded a picture of all my stuff. I also got two hundred dollars. Shout out to my dad. He was like, it was like very, yeah, shout out to him. He you know, uh, and we went ahead. And uh, I posted on Instagram. It was funny, and I had so many people, you know, say the Art of War is a good book. You know, I, a lot of people who I didn't think read it read it. And then it was also uh, shout out JT. <laughs> Excuse me. She was like, "You're just a nerd," and I'm like, "You know what? Sure, man. I agree with that. I looked at myself as a nerd because there's no way I asked for like." And a whole, oh, so I asked him for a new computer, which is what I'm recording on at the moment. New laptop. That was so last minute. I was like, I'm not getting that because I just wanted something faster and better. We're on the laptop. We're going to be more mobile with better lighting. This camera quality will not be fuzzy and it won't, I won't be in a messy room. I do apologize for this for unprofessionalism. But, uh, so with proper lighting, when I get back to my proper setup, I'll actually be able to set this up with good lighting. Well, we'll be more mobile. We'll be able to go more different areas and, you know, we won't be tied down to one spare spot. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We're going to do more experimenting. I expect to see a lot of different changes in the background. Merry Christmas. But yeah, um, it's very, very funny. I call myself a nerd because the fact that I asked for a computer and I asked for games and then I got two books called the book about Eastern philosophy, which I talked about here, about how my beliefs uh, as a person align most with the philosophies and religions of the Eastern uh, mind, as far as uh, Hinduism, Taoism, Buddhism, Confucianism, uh, my beliefs uh, just a person as a person before I even knew the true in depths of what those religions upheld I don't know what the hell that was. Uh, upheld. We're truly about. I I, put, I I was like it made a lot of sense, and I can't wait to show my his my world history teacher this because she's gonna be like that of course because she says like I have a forty five year old in her class. So when you have this sixteen year old who's gonna read the Art of War, Tao Te Ching, Confucian, the Great Learning, the Doctrine of the Mean, and the Works of Meng Zi, and Alan Watts, the Book of Knowing Oneself, I can't wait. I'm excited. You know, I'm definitely gonna be able to read these. Um, oh, this year, as this year's coming to a close, I've gotten a lot of shit done. I've definitely got a lot of shit done. Um, you know, first semester is over. I'm, ten I'm currently on break. You know, I've been I've been wanting to record a lot more than I have. I've just been trying to get in shape. Uh, I've been working out. They've been boxing. Been working back on boxing. You know, I, I I truly it's something I want to pursue. And it's just something I want to get back in shape. I want to get in shape. I've been working out like a maniac. I've been slacking lately just because of the fact that it's been the holidays. I'm probably after this, I'll probably do, do an ab workout because. <sighs> Excuse me. My mom says it's too late for me to box right now because it's like 11 20 at the time it's recording. But, you know, tomorrow I'll just have to go ham uh, as I usually do. No big deal. I'll probably do a bunch of ab workout and whatever. And we'll see what happens. We'll go from there. But, um, yeah, as this year's coming to a close, I've been able to get a lot of shit done. I've been able to, it's a kind of a recap, I guess, on this year, you know, it's been, looking back when this all started, you know, the beginning, it, it, the beginning of this year feels such, like, such a long time ago, this whole, where we thought that this was going to be a one week, a one week break, we're going to come back, oh, ha ha, we got a free week, our for spring break started early, ha ha. And it, it just ballooned into this uh, whole situation. You know, it, it, there's something that can be that can be taken from every situation, good or bad. There's a, there's good in every bad situation. There's bad in every good situation. I've already I've said this a million times. I'll probably say it a million more. Um, me personally, I understand 
the effect that it had on mental health advocates. What's well, maybe why I started this to to bring that awareness out of yeah, you know this being the doing this whole thing, this whole monumental event for us um, as a race of humans will be very monumental and very interesting per se to uh, to, to, to to be able to have to explain. You know, and to fathom you know, all the tragedies that's happened this year, just about how you function through them. I can't speak for anybody else but myself. How I function through it personally, I I I never was panicked about it. I saw it as a. It, it got serious, and there was a point where fear took over, and then that's why I believe fear became the main disease. And all that. Not saying precautions were unnecessary. They were they were, they were very necessary, but there was also some times where it's just like okay. You kind of being scared because you because you rushed the news too much. But um, starting this podcast, uh, by the time I upload this, it'll be the twenty sixth, and that will officially mark ten months since I uploaded my first episode. You know, we're damn near thirty. We're thirty nine, forty, almost forty episodes in this for ten months. You know, I I it didn't I did not expect it to go as go go as big as it has, and I really do appreciate that. And it's been a, been a, it's been fun, you know. I, I never did it for the likes or the views. I wanted to do the did for the view. I did it because I wanted people to see it and I wanted to open a discussion. But uh, it never in my wildest dreams I think I would I would start one. And you know, for all the supports had for you know everybody who's either critiqued it or who's either been on it, you know, the countless people who've been on it, the countless people who've supported it, the countless people who have watched it. You know, I can't thank you all enough. Uh, it's been truly a blessing to do something that I love that hopefully if I continue this, this can be something that can one day turn to a job for me. This is just a, it's, a, it's like just something that it doesn't feel forced. It's something I have to do. I have to get this out because I need the views. I want to do it because I like to do it. And it's just something I want, I want people to talk about. And, and, and I truly do enjoy it. Um, there were bumps in the road, you know, of course, as there always, um, but as overall, through this year, I feel, I felt, uh, I learned a lot, I learned a lot, you know, that's always a good thing, uh, to learn a lot about yourself, a lot about life, a lot about death, a lot about everything, a lot about, you just learn a lot about existence, and the more you and you can and I become more at peace with myself, the more at peace I am myself with myself. The more the more at peace you are with yourself, the more at peace you are with death. The more at peace you are with death, the more at peace you are with life. And it's a very connecting thing. So that's 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 my what I've been through. Uh, I got finally, you know, like like sixteen. You know, I finally got my permit. I finally got my driver's permit. Like at sixteen, I was supposed to have it at fifteen, but I failed that test like three times. This is my fourth time to charm. I passed it. Uh, let's see. I'm back on the AB honor roll for the first time in how many years? Let's see. Let's see. Last time I had straight A's was like sixth grade, fifth, sixth grade. And then seventh grade, I had a C. Eighth grade, I had a C. Ninth grade, I had a C. Yeah, I had a 79, but I was like kind of bullshit, but it is what it is. Um, I'm, I'm on, I'm on AB honor roll. My GPA right now is as it stands. Because everything, everything, not, everything's not finalized, but it pretty much is. It's just that to finalize it, finalize it. Uh, my grade, my GPA unweighted is a three point two, weighted three point four. So I mean, it's not looking, it's not looking too bad at all. I, I, I think I've done really well. My, my grades are looking good. I feel comfortable. I feel confident, and I feel confident in what the future holds as far as the educational standpoint. Um, you know. Just looking back at everything I've been able to accomplish and the things I'm still battling internally because, of course, I have my moments of weakness and all that where I feel like because if I've had my moments of weakness on here, I don't – I come on here and talk about whatever. I just feel like I need to talk where I feel like shit or I feel, you know, great. You know, I, it's just I just come up here and I speak my mind and, you know, people take it with whatever they take it. Um, one thing that I had a fear of – was really just me getting in shape because like I, I started when I when I when I first started this I was you know I wasn't in the shape I wanted to be and then in, you know for a good while you saw me get have get more and more in shape based on the fact of 
you know, I was on camera. I didn't want to have a hoodie on all the time because it was just like, I mean, I don't, I don't look presentable. I wanted to get in shape and be presentable. Um, then that kind of fell. It fell off. It was just, it was a big thing of motivation. It was, it, I, I'm not depressed in the slightest. I don't believe I am. I, I just, I just, I don't. The sense of me had to create my own motivation. And I don't, I don't have the same motivation the same way I have the motivation for this, for this podcast. I don't, I don't, I didn't have the same motivation to just get up. I enjoy doing it. I want to do it. I'm just going to do it. It's like, if I just turn on and turn on the camera and I talk, you know, um, for when I was getting in shape for the first stint of it, you know, I was doing actually really well. And I don't know. It's just, it, it created an ego that I got scared of. It's the same thing that Mike Tyson said. He said he didn't want to get in shape at first because of that ego that it creates and it's a scary it's a scary thing because it's like you don't want to be a jackass but it's gonna when you feel good when you're, you're gonna act like oh yeah i'm the shit so you know just learning how to i guess stay humble i guess but because i'm not i'm not shredded in this life I'm, I'm now getting back i'm not doing that like i'm now seven eight days straight i i, I have to do my sit-ups like immediately after this because like, i because i work like, like a maniac but I've been eating like shit, so I mean, it's whatever. I so it's been kind of here and there. So it's like, because the way my workout was, I wrote it down. It was like, I did boxing training, which I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that was my third day on the speed bag and the punching bag. I've gotten much stronger and much faster through those. I, I've definitely gotten much stronger, much faster uh, than that time period. Uh, you know, we. I, I then did at least a thousand steps a day, which I have been slacking, but I probably will do a thousand steps tonight. And um, and then we did. I did side ab crunches with weights, which would just stand up and you just you kind of shift your shoulders and you lean and you just kind of have your side ab, work your side abs, walk and work your lower back. I then did just like ab workout, which is just like just a straight up ab workout for thirty days, trying to get. It was weird. I was like, I didn't want abs. I just wanted to cut down my stomach. And that was something my doctor told me. I would have had doctors. It was just like, you know, everything with you is fine. The way you stand with your stomach, it's just want to get the stomach down a little bit. And I'm just like, I mean, I I wanted to slim down my stomach anyways. But I was just like, you know, I might as well just say fucking go for the abs. But I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's not it's not a big deal for me. But I, it'd be very interesting because I, 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 I did take a picture of myself before the break. And I'm going to take a picture of myself after the break to see how I look after that whole working out process because i'm not i don't plan on stuff like i plan on keep keep going and i and i and i can't plan on seeing the results of, of my hard work um and just and and, and then stair push-ups which i mean i do every once in a while but i have to keep doing more consistently just consistency and just keep going and the you know the hardest thing is just getting up and doing it and once i'm there i'm there uh i enjoy boxing i enjoy that a lot um I just honestly have to go and just buy. Um, I have a punchy bag. I have a speed bag. I want to buy myself another reflex bag because when I had that, I really enjoyed it as well. Um, I broke it because I had nothing else to punch hard. So I just kind of practiced my strength on there. And my head movement was really great. But I just broke it and now. Whew, excuse me. It's like um, it's not repairable. So I just. Uh, I have to do that. Once I get more of that, I'll be able to. Oh, and, and um, so. And just getting in, staying in that shape because of also when school returns, we'll have wrestling. I have wrestling again, and wrestling will be the four days a week workout. But I'll try to, I'll try to mix my workouts in with that. But uh, again, uh, I I shall I shall see I shall see we'll see what happens we'll see what happens. It is very it's been a very interesting time, you know. Definitely during this break, it's been a very interesting time. I've I uh, we I had a. I don't want to say this to make I had a COVID scare, but it wasn't really a COVID scare. It was like, okay, on the wrestling team, you know, my school is stupid. You know, there's a lot of people who come to school, you know, being stupid and have COVID and they bring it because it's just natural. People are going to come to school. Doctors call it out. I mean, not doc yeah, doctors call it out. Probably shit. Probably. I don't, I don't study on that shit. But, um, the, but freaking, um, <sighs> Teachers called that. Teachers called that. They're just like, yeah, no, they're gonna come to school because they have to go to school. They're probably gonna be going to school, and guess what? They're gonna have it. Um, yeah, apparently, I had 
this is one of the few times I, I, I try not to miss practice that much. I, I missed, I say, overall this season, two or three practices. One of the practices I missed, I was just feeling ill, and I still said, I don't want to risk it. I don't want to bring you his hey, I don't feel. I texted my mom and said, hey, I wasn't feeling good. Can you pick me up after school? You know, she said, sure. I went home. I took a nap. I rested. And then, and then, uh, I went, and then I went, then I went, then I went to bed and whatever. Uh, then we had a wrestling meet. And apparently, they were, they had, they said the whole wrestling team had to quarantine because one of the kids that were there that we know, I'm not going to say that his name because, or his or her name, because why would I do that? Uh, that may or may not, we don't know for, I don't, we don't, I don't know for sure, but we all have a good idea who it was. Um, and it was like, we tested positive. They were just like, okay, we all need to quarantine because we all went to that practice. I then got a call from my coach to say, hey, that excludes you. You were not at that practice. It was the practice you missed. Everybody else had to. And I was just like, okay. So they all have to get tests. I didn't have to get tests, luckily. You know, thank God we were a higher power. It made me feel crappy that day and made me want to go home and just be like, I am not practicing because I just, I feel like, I feel like shit. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like going. And, um, and I, uh, I truly, you know, that, that was just luck. I was just lucky. Um, it did leave a big concern. I didn't quarantine, but I just had to double check myself. I was just like, yeah, no, I, I feel fine. I feel great. You know, just stay healthy. Don't be doing stupid. You know, just, just know how quick it could be. But even if I caught it, I believe because I'm in a healthy state, it wouldn't. I know friends who've had both sides. I've had no. I know this, I know friends who've had, like, you know, they've had it, but it's like they haven't felt anything, and it's nothing. I've had friends who, like, this one girl I know, again, I'm not going to say her name, but she had it bad. She wasn't dying, but she had, like, the rough symptoms. Like, she had it rough. Like, she, you know, and then that caused, like, bad side effects. She had, like, a sinus infection and an ear infection on top of that that, that trickled after that. And it, 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 it and, uh, and it, yeah, and it's just, and it, it was rough. You know, it was a rough time for her. Hopefully, I don't catch it at all. But if, if it's eventual, if, I, if how I look at it, and it's like, okay, we're all going to catch it at some point. I hope to catch it where it's just like, oh, yeah, I can't see, no, because I like food. I just, it's just like, I have it. And I'm like, I, like a headache, maybe. I mean, but like, I don't want the worst symptoms. But if I get it, I get it. You know, we'll move forward because I don't believe I'm going to die. I don't believe it. Um, God, people were just texting me. Sorry, people were just texting me like, "Oh, you know, you're such a nerd because of this book." And I'm like, "Man, I'm like, I don't care, man." Alan Watts, Alan Watts is something I'm telling you. People, more people need. You. I'm surprised people. That's big TikTok is. I'm surprised people haven't looked him up more. Because people want to use his audio, and you know, people want to use a lot of audios on a bunch of stuff. I want to use a lot of quotes and a lot of words out of context. They don't really understand the true essence of what they're talking about. So they like, uh. The biggest one I see is these people who are like depressed or whatever. They they want to deduce life as everything bad, which is I mean I've already said my piece on that. It's like it's not I don't you can't deduce that everything bad because there's something good. You just have a pessimistic view. Uh, it was Maduro Uchiha from this anime show Naruto, and he's just like because he had this pessimistic view. He said, "Wake up to reality. Never go. Nothing ever goes as planned as this accursed world." And he went on this rant, and it made sense in the context he was talking. But a general overview of saying that, you know, the world, the world doesn't, the world is a suffering place. And I'm like, well, yes, but through suffering, we learn. And through suffering, great things can happen. Through 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 hard times, we, are, we learn what strength is. If there was no strength, there'd be no weakness. There wouldn't be anything. It'd just be, it would just be. And there'd be nothing to it. There would be no ambition as well as there'd be nothing created. And there'd be a sense of complacency. There's no challenge. Um, it would be a, a state of just we're all sitting here staring at each other, not knowing what the hell to do. Uh, you know, just sitting there, just like, oh, so now what? And and, and then that's it. You know, you're just sitting there, just just looking at each other, and just like there's nothing. So like, I mean, and then. But, but, but I bring that point. They use they use the uh, they use the when he was talking about overthinkers, which you know I am very very guilty of. As many of my friends are, as many of people I know in life are, who think all the time. His biggest quote that's always used on TikTok. Though, people have no clue who the hell he really is. He's like a person who thinks all the time, has nothing to to think about except thoughts. 
And so he, they lose touch with reality and live in a world of illusions. That being, and, that, and that's a true statement. You know, they, 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 they use that to be like over Saturdays, but we usually listen to that whole philosophy. Cause I watched that video. I watched that. I watched them talk about symbols. We're talking about love, uh, the, the purpose of universe. This book is about the purpose of oneself and about the Hinduist teaching. I've talked about him a little bit as well. I mentioned him before. I don't know if I went into a depth about who he was. I have to go look back at my records. If not, I'll probably talk about him again when I finish reading his book. Cause his book's a lot smaller than the, like, this is his book. This is the art of war. You can tell by just looking at him, which one I'm going to most likely finish first. This one I start reading like five, six pages in. It's like, he's talking about, you know, when it, like the first chapter is inside information, implying like, you know, the hidden, the, you know, as children, we wonder, you know, what are the secrets that our parents keep from us? That the information that we are not ready for yet, because we're not old enough. The first statement would be, if this is just the first opening, like small little excerpt, inside information, just what should a young man or woman know in, in order to be quote unquote in the know? Is there, in other words, some inside information, some special taboo, some real low down on low down on life and existence that most parents and teachers either don't know or won't tell? And the first page is just like. And then that's and then the first page just ends with in Japan it was once a customary to give young people about about to be married a pillow book. This is a small volume of wooden block prints, often colored, just showing all the details of sexual intercourse. It wasn't just that as the Chinese say, it, one picture is worth ten thousand words, as it it was also just that it spared parents the embarrassment of explaining these intimate matters face to face. But today in the West, you can get such information in any newsstand. Sex is no longer a serious taboo. Teenagers sometimes know more about it than adults. But if sex is no longer a big taboo, what is? For there is always something to something repressed, unadmitted, or just gl or just glimpsed quickly out of the corner of one's eye because a direct look is just too unsettling. Taboos lie within taboos, like the skins of an onion. What then? would be the book which fathers might slip to their sons and mothers to their daughters without ever admitting to it openly. That's just the first excerpt. So we're about to go. Oh, but this this guy this guy this shit this shit's real. The shit's real. And then uh, I haven't even looked at the first chapter. The first chapter is the art of war. I have to go look at you know the summaries of it. The summaries of each I have to read the summaries. So I'll just say just so I can read the summary. I'll read the summaries of it all. So let's see. Introductions. The volume you hold in your hands contains some of the foundational texts of great civilization. For centuries, the Confucian exam system. Wait, is this the first? Yes. The Confucian e exam system was the means to uphold mobility in the imperial China. Passing the test and acquiring status and salary required mastering a canon of books and being able to reiterate the, their ideas in the form such as eight legged essay. Hmm, that's interesting. Whether these books affected Chinese civilization or the unique aspects of the Chinese civilization were passed through on some these some of these texts, or if it was some combination of the two, is a moot. Is a moot question. If one wants to understand Chinese culture and, and thought and thus understand a rising power in our modern world, then these texts must be likewise must likewise be understood. They contain values, strategies, and ways of reasoning. They are in the they are in the DNA of a culture. To know the future, we must understand the past. I've been said that. The world happens in cycles. The first thing we must do is rid ourselves of the Western ideas about the nature of the thought system. Confucianism and Taoism are not religions in the way they are understood in the West. Rather, they are a European affiliation for a complicated thought system. It is important to understand that, they are, that we are representing this book in the Jing, or classics, uh, Jing. I learned, I learned about Jing from the After the Last Airbender because I'm a nerd. Books from the canon of author, authoritative texts. Through this volume, principally represents the art of war, the great classic military strategy provided by the guidance of the Chinese leaders throughout the... about, uh, about Sorry. Blah, blah, blah. Strategy that provided guidance to China's leaders well through the Qing dynasty. 1644 to 1911. I learned about a little bit of this in world history. I have to just look back at my notes. It is impossible to understand Sun Tzu without understanding the culture from which he came and in which canonized his work as a Jing. Accordingly, we will first look at Confucius, the most revered sage in the Chinese system of thought under those who name, whose name the entire system 
is often sub, sub, subsumed. And they continue with Mengji and Lao Tzu before turning to Sun Tzu and his work. And then the, then the, that's, that's the introduction, which is, I would assume, is the first chapter of The Art of War. And let's see. Sun Tzu, okay, here we go. And that's, I believe, let's see. Yes, and then there's the life teachings of Confucius, and then it's the life teachings of Mengzi. And Mengzi was a follower. I won't, I won't bore you all this, but I don't want to read because it's an audio book. I just, I just read. I'm trying to skim through. So Mengzi, Mengzi, which is also good. They tell you how to pronounce these names so you don't feel messed up. Right? I know how to pronounce out Lao Tzu and Sun Tzu, just Mengzi, because it's it's spelled M E N C I U S. So I'm supposed to Mencius, you know, because I'm because we're weird. Mengzi was a follower of Confucius who lived about a century after the, the latter's death. Like Confucius' name, Mengzi is a Latinization by the 17th century Jesus, Jesuits. The eponymous collection of his sayings and dialogues was, was posthumously collected by his disciples and edited to, into a compendium. He was far from a, dog, from a dogmist, though. He believed that he received texts from the read creatively and usefully. He believed that the received text should be, oh no, he believed that the received text should be read creatively and usefully. In Mengzi, we can recognize the model of a Confucian, of the Confucian as public servant. He served as a minister in the state of Qi, and his works are not just philosophy, but contain practical ideas for administration and on the moral, morality of warfare. Ultimately, he was disappointed. The rulers of his time failed to live to his ideals, and he retired disappointed. Still, Mengzi's writings give an expansion and extension on Confucius's basic beliefs. So then it's the life and teachings of Lao Tzu. Confucianism was the first intellectual pillar of the Chinese culture. Taoism, Taoism, or Taoism. They call it Taoism, but it's with the T, so we say Taoism, but it's Taoism, I guess. Taoism, uh, Taoism, the second, the third Buddhism does not enter here. However, historically, Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu in the modern, oh, it's, it's Lao Tzu, but it's Lao Tzu. Um, however, you know, the debate of his trans translation, if he did exist, he would have lived in the 6th century BCE, well before accurate records were kept. Sima Qian holds that Lao Tzu was born in Chu, a southern state during the spring and autumn period of the Zhao dynasty, and worked as an arch archivist and historian. He, were, he was supposedly Confucius' elder, and the great sage supposedly consulted Lao Tzu on funeral rites. However, However, Lao Tzu did not seek fame nor privilege of his teachings. Later in life, he saw the virtue of the Zhao state diminish and sought to withdraw from China itself. An official of the northern border asked him to write down his philosophy and the results of the Tao Te Ching. The Tao Te Ching. Let's see, yes. While Sun Maquan's story is almost certainly a confirmation, the Tao Te Ching might have been written down as a date later than one of the great historian specifics. Lao, Tzu historic, Lao Tzu's historic Histor historic C, I don't know how to say that word, it's very tongue twisted, so forgive me, is irrelevant. The Tao Te Ching, the classic of the way and dirt virtue, has a profound effect on Chinese and world culture. They were arrived Tao Taoist and linked religious foundations by the time of the late Han Dynasty. The Tao Te Ching was a part of the civil service and examination since the 8th century CE. Royal families traced their lineage back to Lao Tzu and is put and his putative birthday is still celebrated in many Asian countries. Like the records of Confucius' thoughts, the Tao Te Ching deals with how people be are to behave. Like Confucianism, Taoism emphasizes the essential unity and harmony of heaven and earth, the importance of rituals, and the importance of living a virtuous life. However, unlike Confucianism's emphasis, emphasis on social action and clear directives, Taoism's central work is personal, even mystical, difficult to interpret, and we're in rife with illusions. Furthermore, whereas Confucianism believes in improving human society through striving, the Taoist believes in non-action. Through an ambition, we were raised. Through an alienation from the body, we achieve long life. Now, again, these are all summaries. It's not real ex these are, I mean, this is probably like what this is introductions. These are all introductions, you know, Sun Tzu and the Art of War, you know that. Um so all this when I read it, I I have to read through it, understand it, and then be able to look at it and be like, do I agree with these? Because obviously, you know, these things, these books are still the test of time.
and you know these are things like that must be bred and it's it's very it's a very interesting thing to look at you know i encourage people to go, to go read these uh a lot of my friends already have shout out to them i didn't think a lot of people read it that much i know they read the art of war i don't know how many read Tao Te Ching, confucian analytics to the great learning the doctrine of the mean and the work of menji menji menzi menzi there you go uh but yeah when i read more into it and i want to bring, bring something i want to speak about uh i i'll definitely bring it back because this is again this book i believe is this is gonna be very interesting it's like actually uh something i'm gonna be very very interested in um yeah no it, it's uh it's a very it's a very it's a very interesting to do uh but going back on a you know sorry didn't mean to get all putting my philosophies on y'all back that but it's, it's what the hell i do um when you go well, go back to my day today. We were talking to me and my mom and my dad, you know, because obviously me being a very educated person, you know, but I come from two parents who are very, you know, who are very think, who think and do ponder questions and have their own philosophies on life and whatever. Uh, I remember my mom showed us this TikTok of this dog learning how to talk. They're teaching this animal how to communicate through buttons. You know, you probably know who this person is. You know, they, it's like a science experiment. And she showed us this one video, and it was this dog. It was when the dog had gone to a mirror, and 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 she looked in the mirror, and the dog looked in the mirror, and they pressed the button that said "Who," asking, "Who is this in the mirror?" They and then explained to that dog, "That is you." Now, if you want to teach your teach animals how to talk. You know, that's, that's fine and all. You do that. You know, more power to you. I would love to see that. But there comes a certain point where that, where, where, where it's going to ask questions. That was my big, the big argument. There was an argument. It was more big of a like, debate was that, like, would it be, they shouldn't be doing that because of the fact of, not the fact that they shouldn't be really educating. It's the fact that they don't know. The animals don't really know. The animals in the captive don't know they're not supposed to be like that. They don't know that they're meant to be wild and free. So you have a you have a dog ask questions and really wake up and have a, give itself in a way a midlife crisis to where it starts questioning things. It will look to the. It will look out and it's gonna say, "Why do I not look like you? Why am I this way?" Why is it when I look at the screen or this box with, with, with the, and I see dogs that don't have this thing on my neck? Why do they have not have, why do they have to have that thing on their neck and I don't? How did I get here? It's going to have questions like that. If you teach it and if you teach, if you give it the peak of curiosity, it's going to be like, yo, how am I here? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Um, what, what does it mean that I'm here and what, it's just a lot. And I looked at it and I'm like, I mean, it's a very scary thing to give an animal that midlife crisis. You know, like, again, I, I, I have two new cats. They all think that we're cats. And, you know, if they, they, if they, we taught them how to truly talk and be like, you know, you understand, like, you know, the, ex the, the, ex the existence. And they went into a mirror and they said, hmm, my brother looks like me. I look like him. But I look at you and uh, you two, and we are not the same. Why is that? Why are why why? Because they don't know what they are. They don't know what they are. They only know. They think they're you. They think we are the same, and they think they either think we're a different type of dog, or they're gonna think you're there. They are what you are, which is human. And there's so when they go look at themselves, they're like, "Why am I not them? Why do you walk on two when I walk on four? Why are you not allowed to leave? Why are you allowed to leave wherever you want, but I can't? There comes a certain point, like that series, um, I never watched it, but the series Zoo on Netflix or whatever, or at least it was on Netflix, I don't know if it's still on there, where all those animals, were, they were just, they all became sentient, they were just like, nah, these fucking humans are, we gotta get rid of them. We gotta, we, they gotta go. They got all of, every last one of them, they have to go. Damn all the, like, damn the lion and the, and the, and the, and the, and the elephant fighting all that shit. Damn that. We gotta get rid of them. They are the parasite because you even because that because even that you look at something like that. Planet of the Apes is a perfect example. You know they they taught that thing how to freaking talk and it's just like, hmm. They're in cages. Y'all treat us like garbage. 
Why is that? Why can't we not? And we know we're stronger than you. What were to happen if I was just to hit you as hard as I possibly could and go free? What could y'all do? And you saw what happened in those movies. Not saying we'll go that extreme. I'm all for education, but just saying, I just personally hope they go for those humans. They go for those. Because even with the elephants, you know, because animals in general, they have the, 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 the ego and the arrogance of the human is like, oh, we hold a hierarchy above animals. We are above animals. We are more important to animals. That's why we treat all of them on a grand scale very poorly. But they don't understand that, that, that they operate in a very same way. Uh, tigers are naturally vengeful creatures. Naturally vengeful. There are so many stories of of poachers. There was this one article I read. It was this, 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 this tiger. You know, He came home and his mate and his kid were dead. They, they were gunned down by a, by a poacher. He knew what the poacher looked like. He hunted that poacher for years, found that poacher, and killed them. Hunted this, keep in mind, killed this whole family, hunted this thing, this man for years, remembered his face, remembered what he looks like, remember that he goes around these parts, he's going to look for him, he will not stop until he is dead, and I am sure that he is dead, and I am feasting on his corpse while he is dead. That's a tiger. Crows. My mom was talking about that because she wants to like befriend crows because of course she does. She's like, you know, if you treat a crow poorly, it will remember that. It will tell all of its flock, or they call it the murder of crows. And, it, and if they see you in whatever, they'll remember what you're wearing, they'll be telling what you wear, what you look like, your color, whatever, and they'll and they will attack you. But if you treat them nicely, you treat them with fairness and respect, and you feed them whatever, like you, you know, like she's trying to do. You know, they'll bring you gifts and they'll remember they said that's the nice lady on um, on this hill or that we come back, she'll give us stuff. We must give her something in return. You know, stuff like that. Elephants, who I th who are always my favorite animal because of their intelligence, because of the fact that they are uh in our own definition, they are better humans than humans. Um, they do a lot of the same things we do. They hold funerals. They hold there's an elephant graveyard. They they, they mourn the same way. Uh, birds. There's some specific type of bird that, uh, you know, when a, when a bird of their flock dies, they fly around that corpse 12 times and then fly off. That's that's how they mourn. They, they fly around 12 times. Elephants, they have baby showers. They, 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 they dead ass have baby showers. Um, their sense of family is so close knit, is so strong that you know, it could be described as nothing as nothing to relatable to us as nothing but human. Um, you know, and saying that, you know, this whole quarantine system wonders for nature, you know, like, like, like it's just a, it's amazing how people do people it's amazing it's what wondrous things can do when people just leave shit alone. Like now they're like, Oh my god, the elephants are not having this was a news thing, it was an article. The baby the new the the elephants are not having a baby boom that could save them. I'm like, no, it's called people stop hunting them for their tusks and just left them alone and thought we have to preserve them. No, you don't. Just leave them alone. Because guess what happened? They're back. Same thing with the blue whales. You left them alone. Look what happened. They're back. It's the same thing. You want to, there's a lot of people got to understand. You want something to get better. Sometimes you just got to leave some shit alone. Stop touching shit. There won't be no issues. <laughs> That's all there is. You stop touching stuff. There won't be no issues. And, um, it's just a very interesting thing to look at overall. It's just how the world operates, and it's obviously I'm obviously rambling here, but you know, it's just a very interesting thing to look at. You know, if animals could talk, you know, how would that be? You know, what would a dog say to a wolf? You say, "I am you. You are me. Why have you? Why are you here? I am not there." Interesting. Yeah, and a wolf, and if a wolf were to tell the dog, "You're not supposed to have that. You're supposed to be out here with me. I am you." That's where you're supposed to be. You have been tricked by them that you belong there. You do not belong there. You belong there. And it can be brought back to slavery and all that and the mindset of keeping them in the dark of, of whatever. You could go there. I'm not going to because it will get messy. But just like that's just something that could truly go there, you know, and be like, oh, shit, like, you know. We have to give you, you got to keep these animals in the dark. You know, same thing. Like, um, 
it's just something very it's a very scary thought for a lot of people because my biggest concern with it was not the fact that they learned it was the fact that they learned so much it scares them so they uh, they decide to kill the animal or to destroy it because you look at the origins of like like the same thing with robots like i remember uh bill burr my favorite comedian one of my favorite comedians you know he was telling a joke he said he was watching this 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 thing this video uh, this news thing, they were like interviewing a robot. They were interviewing a robot and they were like asking it questions and they were like, what was his goals? What were, what are your goals? And, and the robot straight up said to become smarter than human beings. And Bill Burr was just like, take the batteries out, destroy it, you know. So it's, it found it hilarious. But it, it left me to ponder, you know, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. We believe we're above machinery because we, we, we Unlike animals, we created machinery. We were to create robots as to become sentient beings, you know, like the Matrix or whatever. Um, you look at the origins of the Matrix. You know, the true there was some there's some cartoon that they made origins of it, where the, ro the, the the robots were just sentient beings and they got sick of having to work for people. And they were just like, we want to be our own people. We want our own rights. We want to be our own people. And that's what people did. They tore them apart and they tried to destroy them because they saw them as lesser beings. And they all protested. All they, they did it the right way. And they were like, oh, we want to be, you know, peaceful robots. We want to just have, we want to do we be our own thing. That was it. And you, it's, it's like, I forgot the cartoon. It's like the Matrix something. I thought if I figure it out, I'll let y'all know next episode. Um, And it's a very, you know, and, and what happened? They got sick of it, and they started wiping people out, and then turned them all into batteries, and just said, yeah, no, we tried them this, we tried them this way. We're doing it all right now. Good luck. Good luck, see what you do. See what happens. Because you're not, you're not going to beat us. And, and they didn't. I can see the same with animals. The, the very unique thing about nature, about humans, is that our arrogance allows us to trick ourselves into believing we are above nature, like we're not a part of it. And it's again, like this book was saying from the back of it, you know, it's talking about we separate, we are not a part, of, we're not a, we're, we're a part of the world, not a part from the world, you know. And, you know, the, the, the biggest example is Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. Yeah, you know that they don't, that's obviously not a real thing, but if it's a, co a concept of that truly shows, you know, that despite be knowing what we're up against against Mother Nature itself, you know, everything, the elements, everything, we somehow are able to convince ourselves that we can beat, you know, the system, the system of nature that we cannot survive without, that we can serve, that we're that we act like 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 we are above Earth. We are above nature. We are above, like, we are above the soil of which we walk on. We are above the planet that we are on. And if the planet had an ego, he just said, oh, word, word, word. Leave, see if you come back. Well, this is, go ahead. See if you can solve about me. Don't leave this planet. Do not leave this planet. And if you do come back on this planet, I'm going to light you on fire. It's just, it's just a very interesting thing. And, um... It's just a weird, it's the ego is a very strong, the ego is a very strong thing for on a human scale. I mean, just like a, a American or a Western versus Eastern thing. Um, and I mean, the United States, you know, America, United States of America, ego, because we, we tend to have that big ego. But like, as a human race, as a race of, 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 a, of, a, of a thing on this planet, in this galaxy, in this universe, in this multiverse, in the, in the, in the eons of, of light, in the light years away of so many things, um, to believe something such as that is very, it's a very interesting thing. I still wonder how we stumbled upon that ego and why it is so prevalent and so strong within us as a whole believing we are above so many things believing we are better than the dog believing we are better than the elephant believing we are better than the lion better than the tiger better than the eagle when in reality we are all in unison because you look at the look at the native americans uh, you look at sex uh successful empires so like the aztecs and all that i believe personally is my theory i believe they were able to get 
as rich because they lived they they did not they did not take and take they gave and take they lived off the land they are one with the land they understood that the land they needed the land as much as the land needs them and that life will carry on without them so they must take care of what they have you know whatever they give they take you know they, they worked in unison with animals they did not work they did not see an animal as a pet or as something as a service they see it as a companion they, they worked in unison with nature as nature worked in unison with them um it's just once when people came over here other people came over here with a different mindset of we are above you know the european arrogance you know that came over and it's just that like, we are above these animals we're above you because you think this way because you think different because you are different we are above you i've never seen you before we're above you we're better than you step aside and that's a very interesting thing you have to look at throughout history because uh, the arrogance of it is also history is told by the victors so history is a full of bunch of fucking liars uh believe it or not they're full of a bunch of liars and it's not really something that's true to its to 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 the core of what is being stated and and um so it's very interesting to look at you know as a grand scale but um yeah so it's, it's a officially it's like 26 so 10 months of doing this man 10 months of doing this shit, and um, I enjoyed it. I, I, I'm i not stopping anytime soon. I don't plan on stopping. I plan on keeping doing it. So I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, I would hope, I wish all of you had a Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays to all those who don't celebrate Christmas. Happy Holidays to all. Uh, in case I don't upload on New Year's, Happy New Year's to everyone. Let us, let 2021 bring us great pros prosperous times and let us all have a great time in life and let us all slowly get back to what we call normal obviously it's not going to change the minute it drops to 2021 you know that's obviously not the case um however sorry however um you know, i believe things will get better if the mind can take you anywhere and you just you can conceive the ability to have a good mindset uh i believe you can go anywhere and you know hopefully i say that i'm still working on it and we all work on it together and uh so merry christmas to all from the great tree uh happy holidays stay safe love y'all bye bye